actually I don't want this one. So I'll pitch it. I want this one. Let's open this up. This is an XML file. And if we open it up here, all right, we'll see a bunch of information uh, about the file. It's still loading, all right. XML is a way to represent data that uses markup. If you notice here, there's tags in here, just like there are tags in an HTML document. All right. And this is still loading in our browser. Let's try to open it up otherwise. This is a massive database of a bunch of different kinds of devices. All right, so let's look here. This gives you an idea of the capabilities, and let's just pick one of these at random. Samsung something or other, all right, gives us an idea of a capability. This one has, for example, a capability uh, a maximum data rate of something, 40-something, whatever that means, whatever that represents. Um, if we scroll up on the top a little bit further, we'll see that this device, whatever it is, accepts third-party cookies. So this XML file contains information about the capabilities of different devices. And we can use we can use that in customizing our page more specifically based on the device. So instead of just a binary, is it mobile? Is it not mobile? We can look and say, does the device I'm using have this capability? And if it does, then we can put that content on the page. For example, this one talks about the kind of XML, uh, XHTML support, um, whether it, uh, WML can be used, the preferred markup type for this device, and so on. With this device, the maximum image width is that. The resolution width is that. The resolution height is that. The different image formats that it supports. So, we could, for example, ask, you know, can this device support a JPEG? I would think most devices support JPEGs, right? But we could ask that question. And if it does, then we can display a JPEG on it. If not, then we, uh, then we won't. All right? Now, that's something that they prepared for us, all right? So we don't have to worry about that. We just have to get it installed and get it put in the right place, along with all the other files, if you notice the 40 minutes worth of files, all right? We have to download so we can query this database. This configuration file is what we're going to use to point to those different things edit it with notepad and what I've done is I've configured this to work on our server all right on our server this is the path to the Warful directory and this is a path to the resources folder all right uh, it doesn't work now because we don't have the proper version of PHP but I believe this configuration to be correct we have to point to where those files live on the server so that the code, this bill into there, can find it. Then what we have is, if we look at our PHP document, all right, we have
have some sort of overhead code that we can uh, put in there to get some information about what the requesting device is. And then we can ask, does this have a radio? Or does this allow us to make phone calls? And based on the answer to those questions, we can have a PHP if statement that says, if you can make calls on this, create a link that's actually going to place a telephone call. All right, that's what this line of code right here says. So if the device has that capability, then we're going to create a link to make the phone call. Otherwise, we're just, just, just going to display a text message. All right, we're just going to display a message in text saying what the phone number is. All right, so again, the idea of this Werfel database is it's a database that has a bunch of devices along with their capabilities, and then it gives us code to access that database and ask questions of that database. Do you have device that I'm using? Do you have this capability? Do you have that capability? All right. Some of this will become a little more clear when we actually get this enabled and we can run it and view it. Uh, but I did want to talk about it now, um, just, you know, because that's the next chapter and we'll come back to it. And um, you'll probably have to do something similar to this on one of your pages based on a capability of the device you're using, do one thing versus something else. All right. Again, think of this as sort of a finer uh, le level of granulation. Of, of the device. We're not just looking to see is it mobile or not. We're looking to see does it have these specific capabilities. Because not all mobile devices are the same and in some cases we might want to do one thing, in other cases we might want to do something else. All right. We could even then, um, if we wanted to, we could extend our redirection to look for certain capabilities and based on those capabilities, we could redirect a user to a different page or include a different CSS file or whatever we wanted to do. All right. We'll be coming to that. We'll come back to this when we get it uh, installed and, and working on, uh, on our server. What we're going to talk about instead, because my plan was to spend the whole class talking about this and have your assignment based on this, but what we're going to do instead is talk about developing using a framework. All right, we're going to talk about a particular framework, and we're going to see some short examples of that in, in action. All right, the particular framework that we're talking about is called jQuery Mobile. Okay, um, let's see. Where did, I, where did I put that code? I'm almost sure I downloaded it. Has anyone used jQuery before? All right. Has anyone used any kind of framework before in developing stuff? Which one? Uh, .NET. Okay, .NET. .NET's an example of a framework. Let's make sure we understand this before we go forward. All right. What is a framework? When I talk about, you know, we're going to use a framework and and jQuery is one framework, uh, the .NET framework is another framework. What do I mean by a framework? What does it sound like? pretty easy is, is the bottom line, all right? Um, and there's frameworks for different kinds of things, and jQuery is a popular framework that makes a lot of client-side stuff that you're going to do uh, go, go easy, all right? So you don't have to reinvent the wheel. That's sort of the idea about it, all right? If you think about it, um, a lot of what we do in web development, you know, a lot of websites share a lot of things in common, 
right? They have the same sorts of things, all right? So rather than a developer developing some custom solution just for them, if you can use a set of tools that gives you a head start and makes doing these common things really easy, then you can go in and you can custom code the stuff that's unique to your application. All right? Um, and, and in essence, that's what a framework is. It's a set of components that you can use to simplify your development. All right? And your job then is learning the capabilities of that and learning how to integrate the capabilities of the framework into your own work. So jQuery Mobile is, is one of the, is a framework that we're going to use uh, in this class. One of the things they mention, and I'm, I'm jumping past chapter 5 to chapter 6, if I'm not mistaken. Chapter 5 was a worthful one. Chapter 6 is titled, Building a Mobile Web App Using a Framework. The one thing they talk about this, uh, in this chapter, is there's no really good definition of what an app is, or specifically what a web app is. All right? Now, we can talk about the difference of something living on the web versus being a native app, right? You know. But when we talk about a web app as opposed to a native app, it's not really clear exactly what is meant. Probably the best definition would be, for our purposes, is that a web app looks and behaves more like a native app than a web page. All right? And again, it is a web page, so it's still going to behave somewhat like a web page. But at a glance, it might be easy to confuse it for a full-blown native web app, or a native uh, app as opposed to a web page. So that's not a very precise definition, but again, um, there is no very precise definition. All right? The framework allows us to do that. All right? And the framework allows us to develop things that live on the web that look more like apps. All right. Um, let's see. Let me download the code, uh, which I thought I had already done. But let me download the code, and we'll look at using um, the framework in... doing some simple stuff.
first look and see what we're using. If you could get the lights. All right. One thing we have is at the top of the page, we have three things. And these things we just copy in verbatim. All right. One is a link to a standard style sheet. You could also, I'm sure, uh, load these to your machine, download them, and, and local. That way you wouldn't have to hot link to them. That way you could work if you were not uh, connected to the web. But we have a link to a standard style sheet. And you'll see in, in a second how the styles come into play. All right. We then have a link to two JavaScript uh, files that sort of make the magic happen. All right. Now, what we do then is one thing that we can do is we can assign a data role attribute to some of our HTML tags. All right. What is a data role? A data role is a new HTML5 attribute that sort of explains the purpose of the div. All right. Let's go out and let's get a list of values for this attribute. Here's some examples of, of some of them. There is a data role of page, a data role of header, a data role of content, a data role of a footer.
we look at it, might be a little hard to see, but those list items look like buttons. All right, I'm going to pass that around, take a look at it. Now, I didn't make them links quite yet, but when we make them to be links, those, those links will look like buttons. More or less, yeah, because I, I specified the um, I specified that this is a list view and data of inset uh, of being turned on to true. We can view this in the browser, and let's see, it'll kind of show us what it looks like. In IE, though, it doesn't support that, so those don't really look buttony. All right. Um, you can see the, the square border around it. Uh, on mobile devices, they uh, are styled with um, like the rounded uh, border. Let's see if it does. It. Yeah, in Firefox, there you go. That's kind of what it looks like in the uh, uh, on there. Why doesn't it support an IE? Why is it support an IE? Because yeah. IE doesn't support the CSS required to round the corners like that. I mean, you'll, you'll typically find that that's, you know, that's how it works, you know. Uh, the, the newest of other, of other browsers cover things, and then IE 8 and prior is sort of the, the, the you know, the doesn't support a lot so of the... They don't have, like, CSS, especially for, like, IE? No. Uh, no. Yeah, I would. <laughs> if you look at this, then, well, keep in mind, to back up a second, keep in mind, uh, we're more than likely talking about developing the mobile version of the site. So they're not going to be viewing it via IE. Oh, we're just going to strictly use this for mobile? Yeah, we're going to use this for mobile, right, to give, it, to give it a mobile app look. I can open it up on the desktop, and again, depending on it, but I don't know. Um, there's no need because it's just strictly for mobile, so it yeah. doesn't use IE, right? Right, right. That makes sense. Yeah. So again, we can you know we can look at it here just for the purpose of discussion. I, I also suppose we could we could bring it up in the uh, mobile emulator, and it should work there. I'm curious, does that these Windows phones, you know the Windows phones, uh -huh. do they use Internet Explorer browsers? That's a good question. I've never like I don't know anybody that actually has one. I've never really seen one either. Um. I believe that they would use something called Internet Explorer. What it actually is, you know, um, that's a good question. We can we can Google that when we're done. Yeah. Because I'm the same way. I mean, they're they're so sort of uncommon that it's hard to say. But yeah, you can also view it in the uh, in the, uh, the the emulator. So it's nice that we get this for free. All right. It's nice we can get this without really doing any, ma you know, any major work on our own. That we get this sort of functionality, and again, believe me, this is just really scratching uh, the surface of this. Uh, as we go on, we're going to learn more and more stuff that you can do via jQuery. That again allows you not to worry about reinventing the wheel and implementing some some common functionality, but. Um, allows you just to use the functionality that they've, they've baked into the framework. Questions? So, for your assignment, you have, essentially we've had sort of, th uh, for the five assignments so far, they're, they're sort of paired up, one, two, and three, We're sort of made a, a, a set, and four and five made up a set. I want you to take one of those two sets of assignments, either one through three or four through five, and try to give a mobile look to it using uh, the stuff in jQuery and the stuff that we're, that, that's covered in Chapter 6 and the stuff that we're going to uh, cover uh, in Chapter 6. So, again, feel free to, to, to do, for example, if you did four and five, you could just do the mobile version. Uh, of it. You wouldn't have to re redo the desktop version of it. You could just make the mobile version use these jQuery things. Uh, if you do one, two, or three, uh, 
I guess don't worry about a full version, just do a mobile version uh, of those three pages. Um, all right. Um, Questions? I'm a little hazy about what you mean, use jQuery to give it a mobile look. I mean, what constitutes... What constitutes a mobile look? Yeah, well, yeah. I, mean, uh, I mean, I understand making things adaptable and flexible for... Well, making life. things look more like a mobile application than than a, a web page. So, is it like just providing us with CSS that's pretty much a mobile look, as they say? Yes, it is. Well, is it just that? But that's a part of it. It provides us with a hook into. Now, like, notice I didn't have to give any classes or any IDs. Simply by setting the data role of it, it got that CSS applied to it. Um, again, there, there's a content, there's, there's header, there's uh, content, header, footer, there was the list view. Um, again, and then you'll see some examples so contained. Uh, this applies their CSS to these? Yes. Does it add any functionality? Like, you press this button and... jQuery does add the functionality. Does the first part that we're going to do is, is the appearance. All right. All right. What do I mean again? What I, what I mean by this is, notice like review the book, and this is in chapter six, but if you look, for example, on page 233, I guess is a good example, that doesn't look like a web page. That looks like a mobile app. All right, that doesn't really look like a web page. That looks like a mobile app. So that's really sort of what we're looking for in this upcoming assignment is to have 